In a previous example, we were examining the relationship between the angle at the center and the angle on the circumference. And what we found in that example was that B was 15. We then said that O and D also have a relationship. And so we found that D was also equal to 15 degrees. But now what if we just cut out the O completely and we just link B and D together? Is there maybe a relationship between angles that are on the circumference of a circle? Well, yes, there is. And that's the purpose of this video. So if we have a circle, such as this over here, let's examine a few more relationships. So notice we don't have the center of this circle. But let's take the angle that we do have, which is angle B. And so let's do what we normally do, and we start off at B. Let's work our way backwards along the lines that connect at B and see which letters we get to. So if we go from B along this line over here, well, we end up at C. Now, technically, we also got to E, but when you use this method, you must go right to the edge of the circle. And if you go along this line, well, there we get to A. And so we can say that A, C, well, the points A and C, they come together at B. Now that we are at A and C, let's see what other points they come together at. So if we go from A and we keep going, keep going, remember, we must go right to the edge. Well, that gets us to D. And if we go along C, well, that's also going to work. And so there is going to be a relationship between D and B. We must just make sure that D and B are on the same side of the circle segment. So the segment is going to be between A and C. And so, yes, there's an upper segment and a lower segment. B and D are both in the upper segment, and so this works. And so what Euclid found was that D and B are going to have the same angle okay we're not going to use the half or the two times angle anymore because that's only when you have an angle at the center and an angle at the circumference in this one both of the angles are at the circumference and so they will be the same so the reasoning would say that d is equal to 30. now i've seen different reasons used by different teachers in different schools so your teacher might use a slightly different reason to mine but what what i'm using here it will just help you to get the idea of what we are saying. It is due to the fact that the angles are in the same segment. That's all. So angles in the same segment. And what many teachers actually do is they just cut off the M-E-N-T, so the ment part, and they just say same segment with a little dot. Okay. So if we had to have a quick look at this shape over here, I'm going to just choose A for example. Now, if you start at A and you work your way backwards along the two lines, you would get to C and you would get to D. Now, if you had to start at A, I mean at D and C and work your way along two other lines, where would we get to? Well, we would get to B and we would get to, oh, sorry, if we started at C as well, we would also get to B. And so C and D, they form angle A and they form angle B. Angle A and angle B are also in the same segment. They are both above that dotted line. And so straight away, we could say that angle B is equal to angle A. I'm not going to go fill in all the reasons now. This is just an introductory video. Furthermore, if we had to look at angle C, let's work our way backwards along its lines. Well, that takes us to A. And if we go up this line over here, then we get to B. So that means that A and B formed C. So let's start at A and B now and see which other angles we can form. Well, there we get to D. And if we come down this one, we also get to D. Now, are C and D on the same circle segment? Well, if we connect A and B, yes, they both on that side, whereas then none of them are on this side over here. They're all on the same side of the dotted line. And so straight away, we could say that angle C is equal to 80. And the reason for both of those is angles in the same circle segment. Therefore, angle B is equal to angle A, and angle C is equal to angle D. Now, you're going to get faster at doing this, but let me just show you something. We need to start identifying this kind of shape. Now, what kind of shape do you see in this diagram? Well, it's almost like a bow tie. So whenever you see a bow tie kind of shape, you should start to think about this. It will always tell us that this angle is the same as that angle. 
and this angle is always going to be the same as that angle. It won't always work, but 99% of the time it will. So as soon as you start seeing these bow tie shapes in your diagram, you got to look out for that theorem that says that the corner angles are equal to each other.